<laughs> One day, Cameron, I'm excited for when you and uh, Max and Seneca drop an album. I'll just produce it. Mm, okay. Nice. I would sign up for that. <clears throat> nice. All right. So, what are we going to talk about today? <laughs> Jeez. I mean, I mean, I've realized a lot of cool stuff recently. All right. Uh, okay, cool. Uh, in what context? Yeah. In the context of self perfection. Okay. Perfecting myself. What about you, Drake? Uh, I just watched this video Russell Brand did uh, about Bill Gates. And isn't just, that like every one of his videos? Well, <laughs> every other one. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it turns out like Bill, R- Russell Brand is like funded by the Bill Gates <laughs> Foundation and like. That's what he was talking about. That's exactly what he was talking about. He's talking about like how um, MSNBC. Do you know what the MS stands for? M- MSNBC? Multiple sclerosis. Mitchell Snyder. Microsoft. <laughs> Microsoft <Nuh-uh>. penis. Yes. <laughs> no, not really. Really? Really. Seriously. Yeah. And so <laughs> what Russell Brand was talking about was like how much money, like just over the last year, uh, the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation has contributed over $319 million to various media enterprises. And so he's like, oh, so you want to criticize Bill Gates? Well, are you on CNN? Are you on MSNBC? Are you on, you know, all these like major networks? Like, then you're probably not going to talk shit about him because he's given millions to each of these organizations and to their charities and foundations. And it's like, um, they always talk about transparency or whatever. And when they're showing where they give the money, it's like, oh, to college graduates or, or to fund high school graduation rates, something stupid like that, right? But then it's really going to uh, CNN. <laughs> like, and you're like, wait, what? How did you justify that? You know? So um, it was interesting because what he was saying is at what point would you look into this person? Who, at, at what level? There's, I'm, I'm not saying he's doing anything nefarious, but isn't it a conflict of interest that the guy who has uh, the most funding into uh, like health, like just, just various health industry things, like, I don't know, vaccines, right? The guy who has the most funding in uh, technology, at, at least that, that we know of like as an individual, right? Um, and, and all these things, why would he ever be criticized? Because he's also got the most funding in the major news networks, the major media outlets. And so who's going to criticize him? Who's going to stop that? Who's going to uh, make any point about that? And so it was, uh, it was really interesting. Um, yeah, yeah that, that's what I got. You guys want to drop the intro right now? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know everyone's adrenaline was like where is it where is it there you go and like drake was like yeah and uh anyways <laughs> <laughs> that's how drake likes it that's, that's how i like, like i like a, a little little surprise just like build up and then mm. yeah hey are you reading that book cameron the one about uh, the real fauci by robert I'm, i haven't Kennedy? started it yet oh, okay yeah be curious about that too man bill it's all it's almost like if you didn't really understand it you would think bill gates is just above the law and he's completely unstoppable you know is he not i, I had it in here I mean, it, it, right. That's like, that's the question is oh, how right. can the law even take someone like that and bring him justice if he's got that much influence and clout and that much money? You know, right? I, I watched or I was listening to um, some Watch the Throne. You, you remember Watch the Throne, Jay-Z. The album? Kanye. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I listen to that like every night with Seth. Um, 
And it's funny, Jay Z has a line in there. Sung him. That he says, uh, he says, political asylum can be purchased. I've got five passports. I'm never going to jail. Right. And that's just like on the level of a rapper who's made a lot of money, mm-hmm. made millions. Mm-hmm. Right. But like he even sees, hey, look, I can uh, evade a lot of legal re- repercussions because of the wealth that I have and the connections mm-hmm. that I have. Well, think about now, this for a moment. Like yeah. who, like the average person, a peasant in the fields plowing all day, are they forming governments? I don't know. They're forming like, mounds of dirt. Where does the government get the money to build these big ass build capital buildings and shit? Donations, taxes. right? Well, taxes, well, but, but also donation, right? From the foundations. Yeah, that's true. But I mean, okay, they think about it. The government works hand in hand, obviously, with like the Federal Reserve, other like banks and so forth, right? Is how how is the how is the government currently in any way separate from the interests of the elite? It's not. Like it's yeah. actually a manifestation of I'm not saying they're to blame, but I'm saying in terms of the day-to-day operation function and so and so forth like who is it that create who's who created the government i mean think about even in our own country it was all the fucking elite business guys like that created the government and before it was like the king you know what i mean and then like let's say there's a revolution okay and like the the average person turns over the government and and, like makes a new one like oh and then like immediately the next day that they're the one percent aren't in there like doing what they're doing so if you think about it, the, the government, the, the purpose of the police, the law and so forth is to protect the property of the 1%. That's the purpose of police. What, think about it, what's the purpose of police to protect property? I mean, yeah, like stop people from murdering each other, but how often does a police officer stop someone from murdering someone? Hmm. Like they can't stop them necessarily unless they're like right there. Mm-hmm. Have you seen the movie, uh, that Tom Cruise movie? Minority Report? That's it, thank you. <laughs> So you have seen it. <laughs> they stopped a lot of murders there. They stopped all of them. In, in fact... They didn't that, stop his son from being murdered. Maybe that happened before. True. Yeah. Mm. But, but here's what I'm saying, right? Right now, they're stopping or they're trying to stop all sickness, <laughs> all viruses. So guess where, guess where everybody else has to be? We got to be in those little cubicle rooms, things, whatever. With the prefer to call them internment camps. I was... like I like camp. I I went to a couple of camps as a kid. <laughs> I hated camp. It's like some <laughs> church camp. Think <laughs> about this: like if people are like, "Oh, you can't call these things in Australia and and um, Canada concentration camps and all that stuff," and it's like, but. That's that same side who's saying that right now. What were they saying about those like those facilities of people right. coming across the border? Oh yeah, for right. the immigrants. They were straight up calling them concentration camps. And even like, remember, even the fucking uh, Holocaust Museum, like, put up a thing like comparing them and everything like that. But then they don't want to compare this, right? And it's, it's like number interest. one, Weird. you know, huh? It's not in their interest. It's not in their political interests. Right. So it's just fuck, man. Like the whole, the whole thing. And it's like you were saying earlier with, would the media criticize Bill Gates? It's like, would they criticize? They're never going to be on the side of what is actually best in the context of the way things work right now, because everything, media, government, police, everything is in the context of protecting the interests of the 1%. That's why they protected the, uh, what do you call it? Black Lives Matter and all that stuff, because that was all about furthering the agenda of the elite. You know? Yeah. Yeah. I'm... Cameron, has anyone ever called you a conspiracy theorist? Actually, no. Because he's usually <laughs> right. No, because I make sense. <laughs> conspiracy theorists don't. They just go right. off into this deep end. Like I watched this one thing a long time ago and this guy was talking about how there was this one dude, this like little skeevy guy, you don't ever heard of him, kind of like who was like working for the mind control of the government. He wrote all of the songs for the Beatles and all this stuff. And like, and I'm like, ah. that, you know what I mean? It's like, it'd be like if like, you're like Van Gogh didn't make his paintings. 
somebody else told him where to put each paint and you're like come on guy like the guy was actually an artist like john lennon was actually a creative artist Mm -hmm. now you could also say within his mindset he was saying a lot of communist shit you could say that if you want to but you don't have to go so far as to like make up a fantasy that there was some cia agent writing their lyrics for them and shit i mean like give me a break so you know what i mean there's a point where it doesn't make sense like it's not necessary right right the practicality is gone from it but russell brown was making this point of like that he doesn't like conspiracy theories he he doesn't consider himself a conspiracy theorist because there's so much evidence for so much shit that you can just read the evidence and like oh (laughs) this is clearly what's going on it's like you could say it's a conspiracy theory that the elite created schools to control the masses and so forth and it's like well who created schools who created the public school system yeah literally the elite did literally i mean what was it the average person like no clearly not they're not fucking creating anything that's the problem Mm -hmm. so they created it the elite did and what is the elite motivated by money so why wouldn't they do things in a way that would protect their interests even if they didn't realize they were doing that they're still going to unconsciously do that Mm -hmm. so it's it's not hard to to see i mean it's interesting right now there's this because of the whole thing that has i don't even know what you call it like there was definitely a, a shift, like a break in reality when the pandemic started. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, maybe you could say it happened before then, actually. Hey, that's funny. Well, that was the same time I came to visit you in Houston for the first time. Yeah, it was like right before that. Yeah. But you no, know, maybe that was the was... first time I heard of the coronavirus was we were hanging on your kitchen. You're like, hey, have you seen about this coronavirus thing? You're like, really? I think this is going to be a big thing. Yeah. I was like, oh, yeah. no. <laughs> <laughs> I do not remember that. Well, but, actually, um, the break started with uh, Event 201, actually. <laughs> well, I was thinking the break started with, like, Trump being elected. Mm. I really think that was the break, or, like, that process of him running and, and being elected. Because before that, like, think about it. That's nice. Where's the beer can? It's inside. Okay. Is that non? What is that on? Uh, no, it's, um, it it's a quesadilla. Oh. So that's salsa on top. That's wow. Amazing. Oh, by the way, tell Christine that granola is amazing. Katie makes it all the time now. So I have like a bag of it on constant supply. Christine, Cam says your granola is amazing. Her recipe. She should like brand it. She could like, she, she could just, do it. She just business. gave one of she these. She could sell it. She just gave one of these. She could, she could, Unconscious she could, package it. she could package it and sell it. That's what we're going to do now, Kim. We're just going to package and sell granola. That's that's our life purpose. Now. I think there's a, there's, a large, there's, a large, there's a large market for hippies, right? She could call it Comrade Christine's. That could be like her brand. <laughs> Too bad they're all broke. So you're going to have to charge. Not that's No, that, but hold on. That's true, but that's because they spend all their money on granola. Hey, <laughs> to just get their money. I think we just, saw, we just solved the problem. That's it right there. Solution. Comrade Christine's. This episode brought to you by um and it's like her in like a che guevara outfit oh dude and we could sell che guevara style shirts but it's christine oh everything yeah I, that's what i'm saying like yeah you gotta tell her about this idea man that would be funny this episode actually. i don't have to tell her she, she actually oh, listens oh yeah <laughs> uh but seriously like i eat that granola man it's so good um obviously it's a recipe so she could license the recipe too to like hippie communes and cults exclusively mm. hopefully ex- might even pick that up she can be like it's the exclusive granola of the self-perfected cult dude watch then bill and melinda gates some representative from them comes knocking on your door and is like hey i got some funding for you i like what yeah. you guys are doing they're like if 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 <laughs> the only caveat is if bill gates name ever comes up in conjunction with granola you must not talk any shit about bill gates <laughs> he like gets in <laughs> every market he's like I don't even know. It's like toilet paper. It's like Charmin. He's like, if, if Bill Gates' name ever is referenced in terms of toilet paper, you must say something positive about him. We're like talking shit about Bill Gates on the podcast and Drake is just quiet. He's like, no, Bill Gates is actually kind of a good guy. <laughs> Drake like, just gets like sold him. out. I like him. Speaking of assholes. Uh, uh, you, you know, he also funds uh, journalists to go to school. Like, 
he, he funds scholarships specifically for journalists who are studying uh, anything to do with health, right? Uh, and a few other um, a few other industries as well. But like it's all concentrated on the industries that he's interested in, that he has a like investment in, you know? So it's like he funds the journalists themselves, then he funds their networks, he funds the charities that those networks uh, also control, and he funds the projects, the research projects that uh, are being, you know, brought to the surface and then put into the media. So it's like, at what point would anyone say anything bad? Like, of course, the research projects, we've talked about this so many times, but like uh, anytime there's a, a research project on anything, it's like the company put funding towards that so that it could say something good in their light. So they could say, hey, we've done studies on this and look at how much it improves whatever, right? He's doing that yeah. on every fucking level. Like imagine having that kind of control where it's not only I funded the research project. I've also funded the media that's uh, going to be writing this research project. Also the person who's writing it, I pay for them to go to school and uh, I'm funding everything that like touches this research project. So by the time you get it, it's like, it's perfectly curated to say, Bill Gates is the shit. And you don't even know it's saying Bill Gates is the shit. You're just like, oh man, this research, it makes so much sense. Yeah, of course we should go along with this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, hey, every little up. Uh, banner on the Facebook thing that's like the vax is proven to be safe and effective or all the fact checking everything. It's like, Hey, when, when was he funny. supposed, remember when he did that, that whole lawsuit with the government and everything? Mm -hmm. When was that, Drake? Can you look that up? Like, I want to know when, when was that lawsuit and that whole thing resolved? And then also when was it he was supposed to have been meeting with Epstein? Because mm. like there was a point where he went to like another level. You see what I mean? It was like before he was just a guy running a software company and it was mega big because it was, he got it in all the computers. But think about the way you have to think to be able to get Microsoft into every single fucking computer everything because like why is it that all computers windows like there's why is there such a thing as a windows computer if you think about it like what kind of computers are there there's windows and macs i know there's other ones but that's not how people think about it there's windows and there's macs but Macs is a brand of computer so it makes sense that their software would be on it potentially but a windows computer is not a kind of computer but computers are designed specifically for windows in essence that's like some serious strategizing that you had to do. So the kind of person who can do that, and then they go to the level of, well, I want to even go to another level of, of power. They would then think like that in terms of everything. You know what I mean? Yeah, and like, think about it. Why every single person, you remember that whole thing about how they said something about, it's like he was meeting with Epstein because Epstein apparently knew people on the Nobel prize committee and so forth. Why did Bill Gates want a Nobel prize? You see, it's like just that next level of, uh, what's the word, uh, uh, public relations. Yeah. Yeah. yeah cloud. cloud public relations. So, so imagine if right now during the pandemic, they were like Nobel prize winner, Bill Gates is behind all of this stuff. They feel like everyone would even be more on board with it. You see what I mean? It's, of course he's like looking for that kind of stuff. Yeah. I watched his documentary on Netflix, one of them, right? And um, at the very end, they asked him, they said, like, what drives you? What keeps you going for this whole thing? And he goes, one word, optimization. And the very interesting, I looked at that for, I've, it's still like, I'm looking at that because it's like, what the fuck are you optimizing for? <laughs> right? Because optimization in itself is, you know, that it, it doesn't, it's not clear, but if you're optimizing yeah. for, let's say the, the, I mean, like a certain course for humanity, let's say, well, that would mean that you're probably ruthless with certain things, right? It's like, if, if you're optimized, if, if he has this idea of like, this is the optimum state for the earth and for humanity and everything where it involves like, you know, severe control on the climate or shit, what do they call it? Geoengineering? And the whole thing where you're like manipulating the weather, I'm sure he's into that stuff. And then also then how do you um, influence? Oh, maybe that's why there's so much propaganda about climate change, because literally the elites are manipulating the weather 
but mm-hmm. they just want people to believe it's like because of humans doing it but it's really them like fucking with the weather <laughs> so it's like a way of framing it before you know <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah huh. <laughs> yeah i mean and, and if you've never heard of the the whole weather engineering thing there's cities and i think it's in dubai or saudi arabia you can look it up where these people are so fucking rich that they will literally seed clouds just so they can make it rain in the middle of a desert just because they can that's called fuck you money <laughs> and that's the type of wealth and influence that you can have but you're telling me that that shit doesn't have some sort of consequence elsewhere in the climate it's like obviously there's if that's what we know about publicly imagine what the fucking military knows about and all right. that stuff right you know they're looking at that and so yeah i just find it fascinating the level of ability people have nowadays when you have the money in the network to manipulate reality not just in terms of what people think or you know basic systems like like um i don't know like infrastructure and cities and urban planning and stuff but like literally the weather (laughs) you can manipulate like the air that everyone breathes it's pretty wild you know but here's the real question that do you see yourself as inferior to bill gates or do you right. see yourself as an equal to Bill Gates? Like that is the ultimate question, right? Are you people will say, fear? people will say, no, I know I'm equal. And it's like, but like, no, you fucking don't. <laughs> Stop lying. <laughs> yourself. Stop lying. <laughs> it, I was listening to the mathematics of Stickman, right? Mm. Super good. So good. Um, but he was making this point. Bernard was making this point of um, there's no inequality well inequality is spelled the same as equality or inequality right because in reality there's only equality it's like only in your mind can you not be equal right um and then like what i got out of listening to that as well was how we don't actually treat each other as equals he and he he says that explicitly right and what i was seeing within that was oh, fuck, people all the time say that, you know, we're equals, everyone's an equal. And and they're aware that people don't treat each other as equals. And so that's why they say it, right? But then they're just saying it within the context of like the elite should be treated equal because they're not caring about anyone else, anyone outside the first world. They really don't give a fuck. And it's obvious, like you look at what's going on in China with the, like they literally have uh, slave labor in China Mm -hmm. because they have, uh, I think they're called Uyghurs, which sound oddly like niggers or Uyghurs, but I think they're just Uyghurs. (laughs) <laughs> oh i'm sorry it's like it's like basically the white people in china that <laughs> act black and like the chinese people they, that's the one thing they can't they can't stand is people who like are imposters to another like culture so they enslave them they like make them do all the manual labor that's so it's like good. a bunch of like white dudes like listening to like you know Wu-Tang yeah. clan yeah obviously yeah. yeah um okay so they've enslaved all of them and they literally have them making fucking nikes and apple phones and shit like that like literally those are the people that they have doing the slave labor look it up and nobody cares everybody still cnn can- i cnn didn't tell me this <laughs> and, and isn't it interesting wasn't it the the most recent olympics and i know it's the upcoming olympics are in freaking china the most recent one was in china the beijing olympics was it recent if, already? I don't know if it was the most recent, but it was pretty recent. Let me see. I think it's second. It. Summer Games. Gates. Bill Gates, antitrust, was in the late 1990s. It started his trial. Um, settled in 2001. And then um, it was in 2011 that he Wait. met with Epstein. Yeah. yeah. So it took him 10 years. Um, if you look it at was pictures, Tokyo. That's why I thought it was Japan. Oh, yeah. yeah. If you look but, at pictures, but there's one coming up so close to each other of Bill Gates. Yeah, the next one. If you look at pictures of Bill Gates before that trial, he was wearing suits. After, just like Spider-Man's uncle. I don't get that reference. Uncle Ben. 
What about him? The only thing I know about Uncle Ben is like he makes that rice. He... <laughs> that's the wrong Uncle Ben. That's, that's I don't know this Uncle Ben. Was, like I don't this, know anything about what is this conspiracy. You're talking about Uncle Ben. What about him? I remember yeah, he no. had eyes. Yeah, no, he, he just looks like you know. You're talking about Uncle Ben or wearing Bill a sweater Gates, right? with a collared shirt. He looks like Mr. Rogers. That's how I think. Of Mr. I don't know Rogers. About Uncle ben. Okay, that's that's more clear. Sure. Hold on, but guys, we, I think we've talked about this before. Just hear me out, okay? Bill Gates is like the front man for the pandemic, event 201, all this stuff, the vaccine, right? I mean, Him it's not even just like, Fauci. oh, he happened to be one of the guys. Like, yeah, he's like connected with them. They have the Global Health <clears throat> Alliance, all this stuff, right? Okay, when did the Mr. Rogers movie come out? Oh, oh yeah. right, we talked about this. We, did talk we about talked about this. this. Yeah, right? it was like, like right before that right before it like just like 9 11 what happened when did when did the uh pearl harbor movie come out it was like the summer of 2001 mm -hmm. yeah so you want to talk about conspiracies man like a beautiful day in the neighborhood a beautiful day think about this like don't you if you learn persuasion and sales you learn how to frame things you know what i mean oh oh remember um we talked about this before that uh, that show with that mentalist guy, Darren Brown, I think it is. Yeah. yeah. Remember, and remember that episode, I, I'm pretty sure we talked about it at one point where yeah. he, where that guy wants that toy or whatever for Christmas. And then like, it ends up he, not being the one he wanted, but he thought it was the one he wanted and all that stuff. Right. Yeah. But it, he like made it, he like controlled, like he put all these things in his environment leading up to the point where he had to make the choice. Or, or he had to be receive the gift in real time and like say like yeah that's what I wanted so he like framed it all like Darren Brown is literally showing everybody like this is how it's fucking done he did it he did it like everyone one. looks at that they're like oh that's a cool trick and it's like he's fucking showing you how the elite manipulate everybody like that's what advertising is that's why you see fucking McDonald's on everything and like every athlete in like every stadium and all this shit it's like constantly impulsing you so you're like Yes, McDonald's is where I go when I want something cheap and I'm hungry, you know? He did another one where he was like, and it might have been the same episode even, where he was showing how he could uh, guess what song you were thinking. And he took these people like, who just seemingly randomly ran into him, like on the street. And he was just like, oh, I'm, I'm, you're, you're playing a song in your head. I know what song it is. And they're like, what? And then he tells them what the song is. And they're like, oh my God, there's like so many millions of songs, you know, on the radio and the airwaves. Like, how did you know I want, I was going to say yes to that song. And it was literally like, he was following this person and every step along the way, he had like a mariachi band playing that song. He had like the stores that they would go into playing that song, like literally everywhere they would go, they would just keep hearing this song all damn day. So by the time they met up with him and they thought it was like coincidental, it was just like, oh, you're clearly thinking of this song, right? You're, you're playing it in your head. Yeah. Like, yeah. It's like, it's exactly what you're saying, Kim. But also that point that you were making about Bill Gates, it's like, okay. Oh, mm, okay. Just watched the uh matrix again and wait is that the fourth one no <laughs> no that's the, is that what they call it the matrix no, again that was the, the fourth time the he watched the matrix one, one in the past okay. month i'm just thinking that the new one is called the matrix again again it's We're like back. again <laughs> again again no so we just watched it christine and i and um, oh wouldn't it be cool if it was like the matrix subtitle take the blue pill no that wouldn't be cool that's what no, but that's what they should call the fourth one. That's that you know that's what they're programming everyone with. Oh, for sure. It's not fucking worth it. For sure. But here's what uh, we saw that was like a, a new perspective on it, right? When, oh wait, hold on, hold on, hold on, real quick. I know, I know, you got this this spell for us, but giving me blue balls right now. When I say Keanu Reeves, what do you think? Uh, what, do you, what comes up? The Matrix, John Wick, like he's a badass. Okay, what else? I don't know. Yeah, no Anything else? I think of Bill and Ted. What kind of a person is he in real life? Oh, he's like, oh, he's like the nicest, kindest person. Apparently, he's like really, like, quiet and. I don't know. He has long hair. 
Peace himself. So, so you're not really affected by the internet programming, but Drake is. Uh, like, I have that same, I mean, I don't know that. I just know that that's what we're supposed to perceive him as. It's like, he's this super nice guy in real life, like super caring. Like he helped fund, you know, the his retarded sister's whatever. Yeah, I don't know, I'm even making it up. But my yeah, point is like, it's like, MSNBC. he's like just super like, just really good guy. Like you see those memes where it's like he's sitting on a park bench and he's like feeding a pigeon his last scrap or something, you know, like weird shit. And I'm like, why is everyone being programmed with that? Yeah. Mm. And then here comes Matrix 4. Mm. Right after the pandemic, like. And, and who produced the fucking Matrix? The Wachowski the, the brothers, sisters. 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 Do you know what I'm saying? Like, Transgender. what is going on, dude? Wachowski. What is going on? Wachowskis. Yeah. Hey, I just want to say. Okay, can I get this out now? Yes. Conspiracy theories are gay. All right. <laughs> or are they trans? Hey. And I say, and I say that in a totally positive way because if someone's like, "How could you say that?" I'm like, "Why do you associate gay with bad?" All right. So, uh, we were watching this, this one, and uh, Trinity goes up to Neo and says, "You move like them." Right? Like, how, how, how could you do that? You, you move like them. And Christine turns to me and she's like, what's the significance of that? Right? That he's moving really fast. And like, oh, he's becoming equal to the system. Right? Like, you have to move like them. And, you know, the, there was a whole scene before that with Morpheus and Neo fighting. And Morpheus is telling Neo, you have to be faster. You have to let go of that limitation. It's within you right this is like for distributors this this next part right you have to become equal to the system meaning like you have to be like the elite you have to what did he have to do what was his final test um doesn't he jump into one of them oh like what, what do you mean as final test like to like in his like simulation, remember when he was like learning all the skills and everything? What was yeah. his final test he had to do? He had to hit Morpheus. He had to beat yeah. Morpheus, didn't he? Jump no, over was... the the buildings. jump over the gap. He had to fucking jump off a skyscraper. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. All right. So in other words, to become equal, you're gonna have to do shit that you're terrified of doing. Because, like, for example, you're not he's not supposed to do that. But even though he knows like, okay, but I'm at another level, I can do things that the average person is not supposed to be able to do in the matrix because the matrix is not real. So like the rules of our system, it's not a real thing. It's a artificial thing that we've created. So the average person is like, no, you, you're not supposed to make a business and become a billionaire and be persuasive and have a, a group that you know you lead and stuff like that. You're not supposed to do any of that. That's all like bad stuff. But think about think about someone like a Joel Osteen or a Bill Gates or someone like that. Well, they're well, like, at, I don't give a fuck about those rules. Look at that point of Bill Gates being Mr. Rogers. Like he's just the frontman. He's just like a really good actor in a way where he's just like, ah, you know, well, I think we should do this. And the, like you like you buy into it. It's like he's a dopey fucking guy. But like behind it, you can see everything he's doing. And you point all of your, uh, what is that, that, that concept that like you point all of your aggression towards this person, all your hate towards this person, when really in the background, it's like this whole other system that's actually moving everything. You know, yeah, what I remember about? the first time I heard of that concept was like, was when John T. Legato talks about Leviathan mm -hmm. yeah, from Thomas Hobbes, right? Where it's yeah. like, you put this whole apparatus in front. So people direct their anger towards that, like uh aoc or the fucking dude with the eye patch you know what i mean you're like those people aren't making the fucking decisions like they're nick actors fury. Too. you're talking about nick fury right uh yeah. yeah i don't even know who that is oh okay Never is that mind. another spider-man reference it is. <laughs> basically <laughs> it is he's like a superman <laughs> he's a marvel superman character, character with a patch anyway uh <laughs> nicotine a nicotine patch <laughs> on the eye, eye. <laughs> direct that's how get it. <laughs> it's like i can see <laughs> but okay we have to be equal to that like he's yeah. willing to play this character like completely change his whole persona in order to get across what needs to happen 
in order to manipulate the world in the way that he wants to manipulate it, right? We're talking about doing this in the context of what's best, but we're going to have to do things that people feel within themselves is like bad or whatever. You know? It seems like a weird thing. Like, oh, that's, why would he do that? You know what I mean? Why would but he like, play he, that character of like the Mr. Rogers type? Because can you imagine him like afterwards being like, ah, oh, fucking sweater, like, God damn, you know what I mean? Like he probably doesn't want to wear that shit, you know? But like, think about Britney Spears, like going on, or Lady Gaga going on stage at like, in las vegas and doing that thing and then afterwards being like oh god take up my makeup oh, i just want to relax you know what i mean like they're not that person like lady gaga is not lady gaga lady gaga is a is a car- character that this person is playing for money and for the fame and all the stuff that they're doing like that's not like you think when they're going and getting a starbucks that they're like lady gaga you know like no they're a fucking normal person so is bill gates yeah and, ev- and think about it every interaction you've ever had with bill gates has been through what media yeah it's been mediated like it's not you're not even interacting with a real person it's you're watching a tv show literally yeah well, but you're thinking no it's on the news so it's a real person no it's still a fucking tv show it's yeah. not real like i've been on a tv show and like you put makeup on and you act a certain way you're not just being yourself it can be well, and don't you remember as a kid watching mr rod i mean i think i did i don't actually remember but like mr rogers is that show on channel two or whatever the fuck yes and you watch it and you're like oh i remember like my parents would be like oh yeah it's like one of those good kid shows because he's teaching you about the world and it's like this good thing right and it's and it seems so hijacked but okay but look at that as well that point of you only see hold on hold on and remember it was tom hanks tom hanks that's who played there were mr rogers oh yeah what what is this isn't and he was one of the He's like the guy who played Mr. Rogers something. in the movie. No, but, but he's like, there's all these fucking conspiracy theories right now. It's like, for some reason, I don't know why, but it's like, there's this focus on Tom Hanks as being like one of the people in the coronavirus thing. Like, cause he was one of the first people to get it and be like, we're at home sick and all this shit and everything. And he's like, I don't know why the, like the QAnons, they all focus on Tom Hanks for some reason. It's weird. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he's, but also coincidentally, he was the guy who played Mr. Rogers. So it's like, what's going on here? Yeah, probably because- people really like Tom Hanks. Like that's the, the programming that you get. It's like Tom Hanks is the nicest person in the fucking world. Nicer than Keanu Reeves. Nice. Leave like, a comment if you think Tom Hanks is nicer than Keanu Reeves. We're about to go way up in the algorithm. I'm, I'm, <laughs> but it's like the kind of go. characters he plays on in shows, right? Generally. And plus like a lot of us, like my generation, like grew up with Tom Hanks, like in the movie Big and like other things like that and so forth. And we grew up with him in Toy Story. Like... You know, I, I mean, I grew up with that too, but it was a little, I was a little bit older. I wasn't like five or six and during, you were, you were an old so, man by then. I was like, no, I was like eight or nine or 12 or oh, something. I was like, okay. so old. Okay. So okay. Old. Hang on. Hang on. Hang on. So I'm now realizing, cause I haven't seen a lot of these movies. I saw a toy story. Okay. But a lot of these other movies that are like classic movies, like minority report or whatever, I'm not seen those. And I don't want to waste my time watching them, but, but. If I want to become equal to the system, I think I need to watch some of these. <laughs> no, I'll watch a little two-minute clip on YouTube describing the movie to me. Minority Report's a cool one. Yeah. I remember watching the trailer and I was like, this seems fucking outdated. Me outdated in what sense? Like, it just seemed like weird and corny. Really? It may have been. It's hard yeah. to tell. It's like, but you know, you guys, a lot of you watched The Matrix recently, right? I don't know if you yeah. did. Mitch. Oh yeah, yeah. Like, does it still hold time. up pretty well? Like in terms, yeah, of, yeah. There's crazy. one. There's one scene where I was like, "That's obviously CGI." No, that was in uh, Inception. Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Inception. I could see it. The Matrix looks like a '90s movie because I think it came out in 1999, right? Mm-hmm. Somewhere around then. Um, 98, so, I think. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it looks like it reminds me so much of the '90s. But then it's like, well, like the trench coats and all that. It's yeah, like, yeah, like, yeah. Like that, that style, that whole grunge, like even the club he goes to, it's like 90s. Like, yeah, anyway. yeah, yeah. Um, but it's still like the storyline is so great. It's like mm-hmm. even um, the, the technology that they're using. Oh, what was it? Who were we listening to that was saying something to the effect of in the Matrix? Oh, no, I was reading a post by Marley. 
that's what it was. Have you read that post that Marley just recently did? This is basically like, hey, if uh, you're afraid of the metaverse, uh, there's a lot more coming that way. Um, but mm. basically he was making this point of when you look at the matrix, in the matrix, in the program, life is like amazing. You, you like you have beautiful clothes, you have uh, really nice food, all of that stuff. And, and it's a bright, beautiful place outside of the matrix in the real world. You're, you're being impulsed with it. it's dark. Right. Your clothes are, are just drab. You, you know, like your appearance, you don't even like the way that you look. The food that you're eating is shit. Like that's your reality. So it's impulsing people to spend more and more time in the matrix, which yeah. is uh, in today, that's more and more time on your, your devices. In the future, it's more and more time in the metaverse with, you know, connected to this VR or whatever, you know? And so um, I guess I, I kind of want to go back to this point of like, becoming equal to the elite, becoming equal to the system, becoming equal to that, because looking at it from the perspective of, are the elite really, like you, you said this before, are the elite really in the metaverse? Are they playing all these games? Like I, I watched this interview with Mark Zuckerberg and some woman, and they were talking about all the new games coming out in the metaverse and, and how cool they you are. You could tell he doesn't fucking know. I mean, yeah maybe that's just how he talks anyways but it, sounded, it very much seemed like he was just like yeah i love that game and you're like you have no idea what clearly the, like, you don't know about that game yeah. that's like what i would say if like i'm trying to connect with someone who i have no idea whatever the fuck they're talking about i'm like yeah that, that's yeah awesome. yeah, do that. Stock yeah. Tits, remember yeah, yeah, yeah exactly <laughs> the, the stocks like yeah that's a great <laughs> stock i love it do you think the market's gonna crash of course. <laughs> what else does it do? <laughs> uh, but um, the point is like, all right, seeing all the things that you see the elite doing that you hate, that is like bad, that is like, oh, you know, I could never be like that. I'm never going to be like that. And thinking that you're above that. And then actually uh, removing that, that, feeling behind it and then just executing what's best you were making this point yesterday of like okay you have to participate in the money system because if you don't participate in it does it still go on yeah do people still get harmed yes so but you are participating in it anyways right like whether you're making a lot of money or you're not making them you're still participating in it right so you can't be like well i'm not going to get rich because that's evil it's like you're still fucking doing it. So you're still well in it. You're still using it. Yeah. Might as well make a lot of money. No, it's just like, it's a best. fact. Like you can't not do it. So, so to say, well, I don't want to participate and become equal to the elite and do all that because that's really evil is like, look, you don't have a choice about whether you participate in the money system. Just accept the fact that you don't have a choice. You're participating in it, whether you become elite, whether you stay where you're at, whether it doesn't matter, you're still participating in it. That'd be like saying, I don't want to breathe oxygen. Yeah. Or like, because, I don't want to have physical matter. Right. It's like, that's, that's a given. It's already there. It's a, it's already a manifested consequence. You can't change that right now. Okay. You can't change it. And I was saying earlier yesterday, like you don't need to change like the fact that we have money. What does it fucking matter? Like, that's not the problem. The problem is that it, we have rules in our system that are, that allow those who have a higher education to put systems in place to keep and accumulate and keep power and control over those who have a lower education. That's the problem. The problem is not the money system per se. The problem is the inequality in education. That's the real issue. The, the problem though is to fix that, you have to have lots of money and influence because the education systems are directed by those who have the money and influence. Because also, what is the education system? It's not just the schools. It's the news. I mean, think about it. Isn't that a part of the education process? Yeah. News. How else and, would you know about the coronavirus? <laughs> right, exactly. That educated everyone on it. That's their way of educating adults. It's just the news. And the, people actually believe it's designed to tell you about what's going on in the world. And it's like, 
Do you think that the news programs are going through every atom in reality and looking at what is significant? Or are they like, here's what we want people to think. Do you see the difference? They're not investigating everything and going, okay, here's what's of significance for you to know. That's what people imagine is happening. That's not what's fucking happening. Right. And what happens every 15 minutes? Commercial break. <laughs> it's like, they're the ones funding. Yeah, it's like they're telling you, hey, that, that, that message was sponsored by us. They're saying that the other way around. Yeah. Yeah, you know, like, like this, we're, I guess they are saying that. But do you know what I'm trying to say? It's like, yeah. the reality is that was, we're here because we're, we're wanting you to know that. You heard that piece because we want you to know it. Right. Yeah. Um, okay. I don't know how this fits in, but I, I see it as significant about the matrix. When the Oracle tells Neo basically that he's not the one, right? Because like, he doesn't believe in himself. There's, there's like so many points within this. that's like really cool. Is it like a takeaway close? It's like a takeaway. Hey, <laughs> she's a closer. That's, that's exactly it. Um, but like, uh, there's so many points within this of where first Neo doesn't really believe in his ability. Like he's limiting himself to become better or stronger or whatever, faster and become equal to the system. And that's like when he's practicing with Morpheus. And then there's a point later where the Oracle tells him he's not the one. And then he basically makes the decision for himself to go and do whatever he's going to do, regardless of whether he's the one or not. Right. Right. Yeah. To, to him, it's like, okay, whatever, but I'm, I need to do this. I'm making this decision. Because up to that point, was he doing it from himself or was he following what he, he was, was being following? Told? Exactly. And so he was still kind of searching because he was like, oh, the, the, the work was going to give me some answers or something or whatever. And it's like, okay, stop searching for answers. Just yeah. start directing stuff. You've seen enough. That's what I see as the significance of that. The, she was basically saying like, you're not the one. Like if, if you're not deciding for yourself, you're not. There is no, it's fate. So that therefore you says. are just going to happen for you or whatever. You have to decide. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. Okay. So yeah. cool here you listening to this it's like we can't decide for you you have to decide to stand up like you listening to this podcast like all right great <laughs> you entertained yourself but you have to make the decision for yourself of what you're actually going to get up and do like by influencing reality for real like influencing reality is not like us making this podcast is cool it's fun it's like we influence reality by the people that we go out and talk to, by the things that we actually physically do, the things that we actually support each other to do in real world, in like our real lives. Mm -hmm. And then that changes things for us and changes things for the people around us. Like, yeah, go ahead, Mitch. I was going to pass. Well, <clears throat> that is very, very well said. And this actually goes back to what I was, what I wanted to share at the beginning. I was waiting for the perfect segue into this because this is okay drop the intro <laughs> okay <laughs> again <laughs> okay now that your adrenaline's pumping and you're focused pay attention because this right here is some fucking spells times a thousand um i've been reflecting on this a lot recently that in the past few weeks i've made specific time for like purely taking action and then i've also made time for purely like reflecting on my life. It's like, it's not this watered down, like, well, I'm kind of working and I'm kind of reflecting. It's like, no, I'm fucking working. And then now I'm in the mode of like, I am listening to audios. I'm like consuming, like journaling, like looking at myself and what I need to change. And in those times of when I'm reflecting, I notice the action that I have to take that's going to be way more effective. So like I put up a new like list of like eight steps I can do every day, put it like on my desk. And now I see it every day. So I know where's best to focus. And so I did that. And then I was reading, um, I'm reading through some of those NeoThink books. And it was really cool because I've been looking at how do I build this business and what we're doing as a techno tutor distributor and like really see it as the starting point of life itself 
and then going into the system and then directing and changing the system. Um, Cause I was still, I could tell it was like, there's still parts of it that was almost like outside of me. I wasn't becoming equal to it. Kind of like Neo going to the point of then equalizing himself and moving as the system. And this was really cool. In one of the Neo thing books, I don't know, because there's these giant books and they have books in it. What, and part of it though, this was a really cool takeaway. He was drawing this analogy between um, like DNA and ribosome, basically like within cells and how you can see your business as a cell. And I thought that was very fitting because of what we do with TechnoTutor and Cell Perfected. It's all about life. And a cell is a unit of life. And he talks about it as a cell of responsibility. Within the cell of responsibility, you have the DNA, which is like your money-making purpose. And then within that, you have ribosomes, which are these protein creating factories, or it's like an energy factory in a sense. And those ribosomes is represented by your mini day schedule. Like you package up what you're doing into units, right? And then you do that with your money making purpose. And then that creates the results that you want, right? As long as you set that up properly. And then he talked about RNA, not mRNA, but this is your mRNA, right? This is the Mitch RNA coming to you to influence your genetic code, okay? It's called uh, power thinking. And it was really cool because he, he gives this question. He says, um, power thinking is like what approach you want to have to any activity. So he would ask himself of like, what is the power approach to this, right? You're about to talk to, you're about to go meet with someone in person. Ask yourself beforehand, what is the power approach to this, right? Don't go meeting with them, just being like, oh, you know, I'm just meeting with you. It's like, what would, what is me as life going to do here? And so then, so it like was really cool because now I see my cell of, res of responsibility. I find cool that cell and cell is like the same thing, right? But um, so, the cell, yeah. the, the cell of responsibility and looking at it of like the money-making purpose, what is the only valid money-making purpose? <laughs> at least the core of it is change the fucking system through educating people, a real education. Like this is a real education, not what you get in fucking school or through Khan Academy. And then how do you then package that up is through a real fucking schedule, right? Knowing what activity you have to do. And then with that, right, injecting in that power thinking. And it's like, that's just focus on that then all fucking day. <laughs> and then part of the mini day is then time to actually reflect, right? So throughout the day, you're not half and half like watered down it's like i'm on and then i'm also on <laughs> yeah it's it's really cool watching you go through all the neo think stuff mm -hmm. which by the way come on guys neo think think like neo um no it's cool because when we started our business i started with studying that stuff right and obviously then with jen and all that too and I was participating in the NeoThink groups for a while, but it was always people that were never going anywhere. And so my purpose was to go in there and see like, who could I connect with that would want to do what we're doing? But it was mostly a lot of older people. And even the younger people, it was like, they were so generally speaking, low vocabulary. Um, and every once in a while you'd meet somebody who was, who had money, but it's like, they were kind of just not really, I don't know how to explain it. It was more like an ego thing for them, like why they were participating, the people that I met anyway. So it was an interesting dynamic in terms of the neo thing groups that I was a part. Um, but I, there was a common thing that I see, like, especially if you go onto Facebook and you go into neo thing groups on Facebook, it's always just a bunch of people like either saying random shit or, it, you, you know, I don't know. How, do, how can I explain it? They're just like, nothing's happening. It's like dead. It's nothing. It's just a it, bunch of random it's interesting because the Mark Hamilton and his dad, Frank Wallace or whatever their relationship is, they're really freaking good writers. Like I love the way they put some words together. And then I take those words and I put them into techno tutor. Like yeah. he's like, how do you create advantage creating positions in your life? I'm like, that's fucking brilliant. But what I see that they didn't do, at least from the research I've done is they didn't know then how to make that real and turn those words into living words that could then be adopted by a culture. Like there was well, no culture. Yeah. Here. Well, but that part of that is what we're doing. 
Yes. <laughs> they're, they're the writers who are giving vocabulary and, 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 and new ways of thinking. And then part of what Mark Hamilton did was what he did differently than his dad, which those are not their real names for anybody's confused. It's just like their pen names. What he did differently was he kind of, he turned it into a, a sacred society. Mm -hmm. So it was like, he, there was original philosophy from his father. And then he took that and then wrote it in a way that like the average person could understand because you'll see the difference in vocabulary level. I've actually done an analysis on neotech versus neothink writing and neo, like if you take verbal advantage, right? Which is like a series of books. It's like a book about increasing your vocabulary and stuff. The highest level of vocabulary, that's the level that Frank Wallace writes at. Mm -hmm. Okay. You'll see if you go through it. Whereas, whereas Neo think he's putting it more into stories and um, kind of, I'm not saying dumbing it down. It, there's a lot of substance in there, but also kind of trying to get it across to people on a, on a wider scale. It's definitely not level 15 of techno tutor level. Right. We'll but if you read Neo tech, it's, you're getting to level 15. Like it's, it's a mm. little, it's a higher level of vocabulary, but anyways, um, here's the main difference I noticed. Cause even with the people that I saw that were running like Neo think groups, which was like part of the secret society expansion of the material was generally speaking, they were people who were already relatively well off in their life. And so they were kind of doing it as a responsibility, but they didn't know how to support the average person to get to that point, but also they, there was, well, I mean, let's get to the point. There was no real purpose. Mm -hmm. Like in the thing is when you read Neo think there's, there's one specifically called Miss Annabelle's secret. And it's a story about this woman who influences this group of children when they were young to kind of see past the average thing that we see in reality to like something more fundamental about what's going on in our world and changing it for the better. And there's still some limitations in the philosophy, but it's pretty cool because it's like showing how she was able to influence them at a young age. And then as they grow up, they start working together and become the new elite who influences and changes things, right? Which is a really cool point. But the, what I noticed is the people who were in NeoThink None of them really adopted, none of, no one I talked to, period, except for maybe a very few. And even them, they were still very limited within, like, because they were so much, they were older. They still didn't have a real, that was like their real purpose. It was like, I'm here in this group and something's going to happen. But I'm not, like, everything we're talking about, we're taking the original vision of NeoThink. And I'm not saying it's we're taking NeoThink only, but I'm saying mm -hmm. if you were to look at it from a NeoThink perspective, we're taking that and we're actually embodying it and, and exp expanding it and taking it to what it's supposed to be. Yeah. Because like thing with, they, same thing with Destiny. All they of those talk points. about a super society. That's a concept. And then they call it like the civilization of the universe where humanity is at this point where we're either going to go into more control and more slavery and just perpetuate this old or we're going to level everybody up to their highest potential and then create this super society where then we can you know create something we've never done before <laughs> but, but like the problem is people what, take they take those doing. philosophies and then mm -hmm. they go to a meeting where they talk about it and then they just go back to their normal life and continue exactly doing what they're doing. like there's no there's a disconnect and so what we what we're doing is saying no let's take this into everything we do and make this our lives make it the way we make our livelihood make it the way we interact with our relationships our friendships our marriages our children our everything and it's challenging in the beginning because you only have very few people so how do you have a local community when it's just one person or, or just a family but you then have to build that one plus one bring mm -hmm. people in yeah. but Right now we're at that cusp, like you were saying, where it's like civilization, civilization is going into one direction or it can go into another. And so when we're at that cusp, people feel this immense pressure of being forced into one direction. And when people feel like they don't have choice, they get agitated, right? So we're that person who can come in and say, hey, you have a choice. It's like Morpheus. Mm -hmm. Instead of thinking of yourself as Neo, Think of yourself as Morpheus. Like in the beginning, you're Neo, right? In the beginning, someone comes along, like like Kian did for you, right, Mitch? Mm -hmm. Kian and Asif, right? Like they were Morpheus for you. Mm -hmm. 
So you come along and you're like, oh, what the hell? And they're like trying to wake you up a little bit to what's your real purpose. You start investigating, you start questioning. You're like kind of, I'm not saying actively resisting, but kind of just like, I don't know. And like having to make decisions along the way. And then finally you're like, okay, I'm clear on what I'm doing. I've now made the choice. I went past the Oracle and now I'm Neo. I've accepted that point. But then I realized I'm not the one. I'm a one. Yes. Right. See, if you take Neo, it's an anagram for one, but we've been programmed to think one means singular, isolated, or like only, only. alone. Mm. Right. But if you take alone and you put another L, you get all one. So we're all one. You see what I mean? We're all, we can all be one, one plus one. That's how you build your clubhouse. Right. Like I was talking to, Actually, Mayor was leaving me a message and he was talking about their, or no, was it Mayor? Who was it? Somebody was telling me about, or maybe it was, maybe it was you. Maybe it was when you were talking earlier, Drake, before we started recording. I can't remember. Somebody was talking about how they went and they did something and they found this one person. And then that person, I think maybe it was you talking about yeah. that. Or at least the, your story was relevant to that too. Where it's like, okay, you got one more person. You're not trying to go right now in front of a group of a thousand people and like give a speech to them. Because that's like what Trump did. Like, look at the average person who voted for Trump. They see him as the one. Right. But the problem is the system is the system loves ones because you can take that, you can manipulate that image, you can shift it, you can mold it, you can do all kinds of stuff with that. But when you become clear within yourself and you support another person and another person is supported, now you have a group where they're equal. And that's the real difference with the matrix, because even in the matrix, everyone else in the matrix movie was still seeing Neo as the one. Mm -hmm. You see what I mean? Like he was the special guy. That should be the real matrix for they all fucking realize they're the one. What was so special about him? Why was it that it seemed like he's a great guy. He loves puppies. Why was it that he was like, just think about it from the perspective of the movie, movie person, the movie watcher. Why was he compared to the other characters special? apparently he was able to like change things like he was the one who was gonna like restore balance or whatever how how does he gonna restore balance they don't know he just has that, was that ever explained or did i just miss it like no 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 it's like he, he's just like he just has like he was selected and he has special uh-huh. ability and morpheus has been looking for him and that they didn't explain but what was the special was, ability it's, it's not really explicit that he could stop bullets but why couldn't morpheus do that i don't know like morpheus obviously could jump across buildings he could do the kung fu and all that stuff why couldn't he also stop bullets i don't know that's a great question vocabulary was too low because he was black was it because keanu was or Ken? was it because <laughs> Neo was special or was it just like, okay, he was the next guy in the line of succession of learning and he was younger or something. So he figured out that ability, but then wouldn't he be able to then teach other people to do that? Wouldn't that theoretically be the point? I mean, they have all those programs that you could just download how to fly a helicopter. Right. But the way, but the way that the, um, the movie frames it, the way I look at it is it's almost like there was somebody who had the potential to see through and that person could have figured out how to replicate themselves. But instead it was like, they got, they bought into a story where actually they just are used by the system to become like Jesus Christ, like in the story figure that everyone believes in. And it becomes a disempowering thing where it's actually used to control me. I mean, that is kind of, I think the course of the rest of the, I mean, to be honest, I watched those a long, long time ago when I was a kid, I've only seen the first matrix again. I haven't seen the other one. So I don't really understand the whole, what was the movie really trying to say with the rest of them and so forth, right? Who cares? But right, but but that's my point though. The, the clearly though, the way it's framed is it's a it's still reinforcing the idea of like this one special person. Mm. Here's, here's what I mean. The point that I see within that when you were talking about Trump, like and how the system loves the ones because then they can manipulate that. That's why the system fights so hard against groups. And calls them cults because everyone like especially in our group is united in purpose right everyone we we all share the same purpose and so because we all share the same purpose 
you can't find like a, a weak spot with any individual one of us because we, we stand as a large, as a like unified group. And so the way to try and fight that by the system is to break that up. Oh, you're a cult and like dismiss everything that they say and, and, and just like uh, get the scared ones, pull them out and, and you can start to disintegrate this, this wall essentially. And that's what you have to do like at, from the perspective of the system to fight uh, when they're all one and it's all ones, right? And so that's what makes the power of the group so powerful and so amazing is that you take any individual piece out. It's like, you're not actually hurting. The right. Community. Because each person is learning to stand up equal to each other. So one person out, that doesn't mean that it doesn't diminish things in any way, but it's like the whole thing doesn't fall apart because that one person was standing as the only point. And that's to a large degree what happened within even the destiny group. You saw it with Jen, you saw it with Neo think, well, Neo think it's kind of hard to say because the, because the Mark Hamilton never stood as like a public figure mm -hmm. as the leadership, although he's still, be, but it's not because of him. It's not because of Bernard. It's not because of Kevin per se. It's just, that's the nature of people who are not able to change their programming or don't, don't know how or are not willing to do it or whatever the case is. They are not becoming equal. Yeah. And so the moment that that person is removed or not there or whatever, there's no direction over the group because that person was directing the group. And the whole point of a group is to have everyone be equal. And that's what we're saying with humanity. If everyone in, hum in, in, in our, in, in humanity was an equal one. I mean, think about it guys. What is the overriding principle in destiny? Oneness and equality. Oneness and equality. Oneness and equality. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I know it was a vague question, but yeah. Oneness and equality. What is oneness? Do you see this, the dimensions to the word? We're all yeah. one, but we're each individual. That's where mm -hmm. you get the one plus one. We're so if we, one. Mm -hmm. we're each a one, right? So what we are sharing this whole time, the podcast, everything we're doing, the tools, all of that is to support those who want to participate initially to become the new one percent, right? Because it like Avery made this really great point. Has it ever been the majority of humanity that has changed our society, our world, our civilization? No. Or has no. it always been a minority? Yeah. Like the American That's actually Revolution causing the change. Yeah, yeah. They're like leading it, creating it, and so forth. Now that might seem to contradict what I'm saying, but. It's like you have a computer system you're trying to design. You need a team of people to go and design it. You're trying to build something like a house. You need a team of people. You don't need everybody in the world to come together and build this house. But the system itself influences and affects everyone, doesn't it? So in order to change the system, you only need a small group initially to do that. But within that group, everyone has to be equal. That doesn't mean everyone has to do the exact same thing. Everyone has to be equal to their actual potential, letting go of excuses, moving through resistance, moving through fears, standing up and so forth. The purpose of that, the only purpose is to adjust the systems that are in this world so that everyone benefits equally. And equally doesn't mean everyone gets exactly the same. It means everyone has equal value. So given who they are, what they're doing, where they're at, if you were to put yourself in their shoes, what would you need? What wouldn't you want the best in that context? Like if I live in the desert versus I live in the Bahamas, am I going to have different physical needs? Some, some are going to be the same. Like I still need, um, you know, I still need oxygen. No matter where you're at, you need oxygen, right? Yeah. Uh, but I'm going to need some kind of irrigation or, or watering stuff if I live in the desert versus I live in the Bahamas, right? Because it rains all the time in the Bahamas or whatever. I don't know. You see what I'm saying? So if I was living in the desert and I switched places with, or this person was there and I switched places, wouldn't I want them to have the best in that particular context? Now, does someone need to live in the desert? That's not the point. The point is, can you see yourself as equal to each person and make sure that the systems that are in this world, make sure each person has what they need that is the best, for what they need. 
And that's not how people look at our world currently. It's a dog eat dog world. It's competitive. It's survival based. It's just get whatever you can. Isn't that what the average person is doing? Yeah. Like the average person is not a good person just because they're not Bill Gates. Mm -hmm. They are doing the exact same thing, the, the exact same thing Bill Gates is doing. They just don't have the vocabulary to create massive amounts of money. Like they are going to work so that they can make money for to buy Christmas presents so they can have a nice warm Christmas with their family and then they can watch football on the weekend or whatever the fuck it is. And like they have this dream of what they're going to do when they're older and all this like they're it's all about themselves. And then they use the idea of giving to charities and shit like that or helping other people as a way of like, oh, but I'm also a good person. So it's okay if I'm selfish at the same time. And yes, you have people in this world who are like really caring and really want to help others. And they might spend their whole life fucking like doing the best they can to like help other people. But because they're doing it on their own, so to speak, and it's not changing the system, it doesn't ever actually make a real difference. So it's actually kind of tragic. This is, you know what I'm saying? I'm not saying like that everybody's just so fucking evil and terrible and like everyone just wants to kill everybody or something like that. It's like, yes, there are people genuinely who are like really good people and like want to help others. And that's fine. It's just, it doesn't really have any effect. And they don't realize that. So it doesn't really matter if there's good people. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because it's, it's the systems that are the key that really affect everything. So if you're still trying to be a good person and help people who are poor, but you're not solving poverty, your goodness isn't really doing anything. It's a good thing, like in the context of a, a system where if there's poor people, it's good to like try to help them. But whose responsibility is it to change that? So, okay, this person who's the good person, maybe I can talk to them and maybe they can do what we're doing and, and support change and actually, or maybe they won't hear me. That my responsibility is then to change the system. It's not to put it onto them. It's to, it's to put it onto myself, right? And within that, we have to walk all the points that are necessary to do that. And what's interesting, and I mean, I've, I've looked at this a lot. Everything that we're suggesting is everything that everybody wants. Like we're suggesting, educate yourself, become emotionally stable, have a real purpose, get married, have kids, support them to become effective, support your, your wife or your husband effectively, have a local community, have real friendships based on purpose, have fun, build a business, make lots of money, do it in a way where you actually support other people to get all those things. That's the system right there. And you might think, well, that's only going to, be, going to benefit your small group and everything. No, the starting point of it is to then have the influence to go and look at, okay, in the larger system, are there laws that, or, or are there things allowed that are keeping other people unnecessarily artificially in a state of lack or in a mindset of lack or being educated for lack? Because the fact that everyone just has kids and puts their kids in the public school or the public education system, generally speaking, by and large, that's a problem. Why are they doing that? You know, and they might say, well, it's nice for you. Like they have to work two jobs. Exactly. What's going on there? Why is it they have, they feel like they have to work two jobs. Why aren't, why weren't they educated to build businesses? Why aren't, why aren't they taking care of where they don't have to make that choice between working a job for survival and educating their kids? There's larger issues, but it's like the whole thing with, you know, when you're in a plane crash, you put your oxygen mask on first. You have to do that everybody who tries to go the route of just help all the people who are in a bad position, like you're in a bad position. Who's helping you? You have to support yourself first, but the way you do it is walking with principles where you can trust yourself to then affect those larger systems. And it's the same thing we're always saying. Yeah. yeah I really that's like how, that. That's how you, that's how you, that's how you break through the matrix, isn't it? Yeah. And I like that too. If people, I think it's a very easy way for people to see it <clears throat> is see yourself as Morpheus instead of Neo, you know, go find the other people who are looking to well, wake up. In Neo in the beginning. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. you have to walk that process of supporting yourself to stabilize. Right. Mm -hmm. that, does that make sense? I'm just clarifying for everybody else. Yeah. yeah. But then at a certain point, it's like, you're not trying to be the one you're just now like, okay, now I'm waking other people up. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. What was their plan when they're outside of the matrix? What do you mean? Like when they get out, unplugged from the matrix, their plan wasn't just go fight the robots, the machines. No, their plan they were to, to go, go back in the, back matrix, the matrix and, yeah. and help wake people up because that was the only way you could do it. You can't um, just go unplug them. Well, it's back into the matrix to change the system from within, right? What happened? I thought in the third movie, he's like in the outside world and then he like confronts something that's like this ball of light and then he walks into it. Don't you remember that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He like, he uh, confronts basically the architect. The, that's what that scenery. is. Yeah. We are. Okay. Anyway. See, but that, but that, but we can, re- <laughs> we can reframe that. We could reframe that as when you get to a certain point, you can confront deeper levels of the system. Yeah. Right. Those would be like the laws or something. Now this whole thing about becoming one with it, honestly, like it doesn't make any sense. If, if you think of the matrix as we're talking about it, the later movies don't make any sense from my perspective. It's still kind of making it like he's this super special guy who's like going in there to like, yeah, it, it, it's, it's almost like a sabotage of the whole point. Mm. You know what I mean? It's almost like they created the matrix and we're like, oh, fuck, what did we do? I'm not saying they actually did this consciously, but then, oh, well, let's fix it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Let's yeah. make sure no one really actually gets the point of it. Yeah. It'll be interesting to see, too, now how society reacts to it all um, when the new one comes out, because I don't know what it's going to be. But, you know, people are going to be talking about it and making conspiracies and predictions and stuff with that. But... And comparing it to the metaverse and all this stuff. Right. Yeah. So it's like, how do I, I the way I look at it is how do I continue to stand up and speak out even more? So that you have more people who are like, yo, there's something going on between the metaverse and the matrix and whatever. So then I'm in a position in the system so that then they can find us. Right. It's like it's almost like a beacon It's like every channel you have. So like your Facebook, Instagram, if you use that YouTube. So you have that. And then you also have the local piece. Right. And you have the meetups and you have a way to consistently message with people and get out flyers for your next clubhouses and things like that. And that's that's the system right there. Like that's actually that real, the cell of responsibility. That's what I see. Right. And remember, remember in the beginning of the matrix, whenever he's like asleep or whatever, and he wakes up and he has that message right, or whatever. It's like, wake up Neo. Right. So that's you waking up this person. They're searching. Mm -hmm. That's why they're at your clubhouse. That's why they're responding to something you said. Mm -hmm. And then your responsibility is to be like, all right, I'm going to, I'm going to show you the red pill. The cool thing is you can explain it first. Like he didn't have any context. They were just like, do you want the red pill or blue pill? And he was like, I guess the red pill. I mean, I don't want to go back to sleep. Right. But then you can explain like, well, here's what the red pill means. Here's your responsibility. Right. And then Mm -hmm. if they're like, well, how do I change myself? Because I can't do all that. Yeah, we have a tool for that. So it's not mystical. Like there is no pill and you just take it and suddenly you can do all these things. Well, actually, hang on, Cameron. I'm just looking at my hat and this looks awfully a lot like a red pill, right? If that were to be in your hand. There you have so it. So are we making pills now? Hey guys, so, go on our, pills. our website. Buy your self-perfected supplements. <laughs> <laughs> They're suppositories. <laughs> yeah. With the granola. <laughs> With the granola. Hey. <laughs> suppository with the granola eh? <laughs> nice yeah yeah so well i think that's cool um what else is there anything else guys i think we need an outro song too that's even as jarring so everyone is hyped. play the outro we don't have one yet <laughs> we'll have maybe we uh, cameron produce it and maybe max could produce it maybe we don't have that you know, like one of those, like end of the game, like ding, 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 ding something. <laughs> yeah. That'd be like great. Outro game music. That'd be cool. Yeah. Yeah. Just, just cool. some experimental jazz, you know, just some like. <laughs> experimental 8-bit jazz. <laughs> Everything I, I do is experimental jazz. If I just put it in that category, you can't criticize it. Because okay. I'm like, you just don't get it. It's like modern abstract expressionism. Like, well, it's whatever. I mean, how does it make you feel? It makes you feel terrible. Well, it made you feel something. Success. <laughs> it made me feel nothing. Made me feel nothing. Well, 
it's it's helping you reflect upon the void of feeling within yourself and the and the uh, apathy that you have towards modern society. Clearly, point. you're dead. <laughs> All right. Well, I think that's for those, wrap, guys. for those who don't want to be dead and you want to be alive, join us, right? www.self-perfected.com and join the calls, right? Join Friday night calls, start a local clubhouse. Well, first understand the material enough, but most of you understand it enough. So now your next point is become a distributor, start a clubhouse, make a shitload of money and then help us stand up, right? And build a big network, be the Morpheus Find more of the ones out there, help them become Morpheus, replicate it over and over. So three to five years from now, this world's actually best for all. So let's make it happen. Nice. Peace.